Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. In my last video, I listed some hot weather, hot guy fragrances. And it was a mix of some hot weather fragrances with a few of slightly deeper scents, which were appropriate for spring, summer evenings, in my opinion, or were suitable for people living in not extreme hot places, for example, the UK, and many other places which don't get torturously hot during the day and still have relatively cooler evenings. Today's video is about some hot weather cool guy fragrances. And here I have scents that are particularly suitable for proper hot weather. And the most important thing is that they shine through the heat and the humidity. So if you're interested in finding out about my picks, please do keep on watching. So the first one on the list today is Torino 21 by Zerjov. So what do I say about this? This is a very crispy, fresh, lemony, green, slightly herbal, aromatic fragrance with fresh, icy, cool mintiness. There's mint and lemon in the opening together with the basil. So there's, there's a hint of fresh spices. It's herbal, it's aromatic with lavender. There's jasmine in the heart, bringing that floral element. And there's blackcurrant, adding that sweet fruitiness. This one is an excellent fragrance for warm weather. It's strong enough to cut through the heat and humidity. It's a bright, energetic, uplifting, light, airy and cool and minty and aromatic fragrance with a bit of muskiness. Performance here is good. It lasts between six to eight hours with a moderate projection, but people can definitely smell you. It's quite mass appealing in the air, but I would still say that it's not a blind buy safe kind of fragrance because of the minty and herbal accords. So sample first before buying. This is Chorion 21 by Zerjov. So up next, I have Karaoke Heart by Juicebox. This one to me is a fantastic fragrance. It's a sparkling, juicy, fruity, woody, very musky fragrance with prominent notes of mango and pineapple. It's slightly floral with peony. Um, I've heard people saying that they smell ripe yellow mango, but I don't get that juicy mango. Uh, what I do get is a mango that's not very juicy or ripe. It's more like um, the one on the drier side, maybe green mango or a mango that's not ripe enough to be dripping with juices, uh, but beautiful, prominent mango nonetheless. It's sweet, very sweet, but not syrupy sweet. It's not gooey or thick by any means. It's light and sparkling and airy and effervescent. There's an inherent dryness about it. And I mean that in the best possible way because I absolutely love this scent. This dry essence is so crispy and so fresh, not fresh in traditional citrusy way, even though there is lemon oil in here. Uh, but to my nose, it doesn't have that tart citrusiness to it. Um, the lemon is well blended with this, with this very light, very beautiful vanilla. So it's fresh in a very musky and a very woody way. And by light, I don't mean in performance, but in texture and the feel. Uh, because the performance here is excellent, the longevity is excellent. It lasts on my skin about eight hours with a beautiful moderate projection. There is a very well blended, ever so slightly powdery, vanillic and slightly boozy quality to it. And by powdery, I mean um, there's, a, there's this feel of powdered sugar that's also slightly toasted. It feels like this, this toasted sugar has been sprinkled um, or more like dusted over the blend. And hence, you can, you can feel it almost physically touching your nose. There's, there's also a bit of this complex, faint creaminess um, with the sandalwood and this velvety, airy, musky goodness with coming from the broxen. I've added this to my collection recently and it's already become a love for me. And yes, there is a very slight sharpness here, but it's not annoying or overbearing. Uh, it goes well with the mood and feel and the profile of the fragrance. It's still in good taste and I just love it anyway. It's a blast of a fragrance, a total winner. Longevity is excellent, seven to eight hours, and it still stays on as a skin scent after the seven plus hour mark and projects within the arm's length. So not in a beastly manner, but in a very beautiful way. Um, to my nose, it's an absolutely unisex scent uh, for anyone to enjoy the tropical, fruity, sweet, not syrupy, but ambery, woody goodness. So it's Karaoke Heart by Juicebox. So up next, I have Elysium by Roja Parfum. 
Elysium is your easy go-to fragrance anytime, any day kind of summer scent, but it's not your basic or average kind of go-to fragrance. This is a spectacular fragrance and there's, there's something about this, this fragrance uh, and it smells absolutely amazing. The keynotes here are grapefruit, bergamot, lime, lemon, lavender, thyme, musk, pink pepper, cedarwood, juniper berry, benzoin and musk. It's a bright, citrusy, fresh green fragrance with a herbaceous quality to it. It's juicy and fruity and floral. It's fresh, it's spicy and dries down to this citrusy, woody and musky scent that stays vibrant throughout the entire wear. There's leather here, which honestly is quite undetectable. There's also an animalic side to it with the labdanum and ambergris. And that's what's adding sexy to the sophisticated, in my opinion. It's adding seductive to the refined and it's adding sensual and special to the casual and fresh. It's a beautifully masculine scent that's easygoing and stimulating and sophisticated at the same time. It's a versatile scent, so good for casual or special occasions. It's charming and it's sensual and seductive, which also makes it so, so perfect for a date. Performance could be better. It offers moderate longevity with moderate sillage. I love it on my husband. I've worn it myself and it gives me six to seven hours of longevity. It's an absolutely stunning scent. It's Elysium by Roja Parfum. So the next one on the list is Gentle Fluidity Silver by MFK. It's a very uplifting, crisp, clean and fresh and spicy and aromatic woody and musky fragrance. It's not a groundbreaking scent profile in my opinion, but it is a luxurious, clean, musky fragrance that's just so, so addictive. It's soapy fresh in a very high quality soapy way. There's a little animalic element to it as well, which I can smell, especially in the opening. But I cannot smell it in the air. But if I bring it close to my nose, I can smell it. On my skin, it has moderate longevity and projection. And after the three hour mark, it feels like sitting quite close to the skin. But it stays on and I can still smell it for about six hours um, unless I overspray. In which case, I can smell it all day. But if you overspray, you may find it a bit too strong in the beginning because it does start quite strong. Stays on a long time on clothes um, and creates this clean, musky scent cloud around you. People will find you smelling very clean. To be honest, I find the performance quite adequate um, and I absolutely love the scent, especially for the warmer months. I sometimes just spray it on my wrist, even if it's not my scent of the day, uh, just to smell it. Uh, and this is all I can smell. It totally overshadows the other scent I have on. It does have a rather potent opening. It's perfect for daytime wear, perfect for hot weather. Quite simple and linear, but pleasant and addictive. Its beauty lies in its simplicity, in my opinion. This is Gentle Fluidity Silver by MFK. By the way, guys, I just quickly had to mention my scent of the day today. And there's a reason I'm making a point of mentioning that even though it's a rather feminine fragrance. So my scent of the day today is Musk Noir Rose by Narcisa Rodriguez. I've kind of slept on this fragrance for so long, but recently just thought of buying it. And this fragrance, you guys, is a whole another level in designer fragrances. It's so, so good. Just get it for your girlfriend, your wife, your partner. The rose here is jammy and yet slightly on the drier side in feel. I kept on thinking why I was finding it so alluring from the very first wear and then it hit me that the rose in here is quite similar to the rose in Dior Homme Parfum to my nose. Um, it's soft, it's spicy, it's slightly powdery, not in a baby powder style. Um, it's sweet, it's fruity, it's floral and again fruity floral not in a fruity floral style traditionally but in somewhat animalic way. There's a bit of very neat smokiness going on as well, um, at least to my nose. I don't know where it's coming from. It's musky and it's sexy and the vanillic dry down, musky dry down is absolutely intoxicating. It's nostalgic and takes me back, um, but it's not a dated kind of scent profile. Longevity is super with moderate sillage. So just get it uh, for your special summer. That is if they don't already own it, because I think I was probably the only one who didn't have it up until now. Um, Apparently, men love this on women and I can vouch for that. So just get it and thank me later. But of course, as always, get a sample first as we are all different and skin chemistry works in mysterious ways. So I'm telling you, um, you'll be thanking me later.
and no not your partner you will be thanking me later if you know what i mean <laughs> just get your nose on it it's worth a try this is musk noir rose by narcissa rodriguez so up next i have bakrat rouge 540 it's the extract version um this fragrance needs no introduction to most people and yes i strongly think that it's still relevant to talk about this in 2024 and it will always be relevant it's my absolute favorite for any occasion any season any weather any place and yes it works beautifully in the hot weather it radiates off your skin in such beautiful and sensual manner as it warms up and reacts with your skin chemistry I can say that for sure because I've worn it to a Premier League football match um, on a very hot and sunny day and it performed like the sexy beast it is. I could smell this own day non-stop. Having said that, I don't use it as often as I would like to anymore because of two reasons. First, I have some close to my heart scent memories attached to this one. Um, so um, I don't want this to become my everyday scent. As this one is my special special um, scent and I'll forever have this in my collection and the second the other reason is that I fear going nose blind to it I'm pretty much nose blind to BR540 the EDP version um, but with this one it comes and goes um, it's actually heartbreaking <laughs> so I try to keep a gap of several weeks or months in between my wears and I only try to wear it on special occasions and I I go light on my sprays, um, plus I don't spray near my nose. I spray on my shoulders and my arms and get the whiffs of this sweet, ambery, musky goodness that this scent is. It's musky, it's intense, it's long lasting. It's a beast mode scent that will get you lots of compliments. I find this to be great in high heat as well, uh, but if you find it a bit too strong, you can probably go for the regular EDP version. I know there are lovers and haters of this fragrance, but I really, really love this fragrance. Um, it's sweet, it's musky, it's woody, it's so intense and yet so airy and light with that sponge sugar kind of feel to it. The saffron is so alluring and so smooth. It's intense, but it never feels cloying and leaves a massive, massive scent trail. So this could be your precious date night scent in hot weather. It works like a charm. It's my number one forever. So this is BR540, the extra version. Up next, I have Reflection Man by Amouage. Reflection Man is a classy, refined, alluring, and stunningly masculine scent that can be worn and enjoyed by a woman as well, in my opinion. I like to wear this myself, uh, mostly just on my wrist, just so I can keep sniffing it all day. Um, I love it, especially in the dry down. Um, it's a clean scent with a fresh opening and a comforting, smooth and heavenly dry down. The floral component here is done in such an opulent manner that it's not harsh or heavy or feminine. It's just plain elegance and sophistication in a bottle. It does start off very green and herbal with the rosemary and petit grain with a little spiciness from the pink pepper. But then the florals kick in and it turns into this creamy, soft, floral fragrance. But the florals don't make it feminine. They just add to the alluring quality. That's like a constant factor here, to be honest. Um, and I don't know why I feel there is this beautiful, warm vanilla in the final dry down, even though there is no vanilla mentioned in the note structure, if I'm not wrong. Um, it dries down to this very masculine, woody fragrance with sandalwood and cedar and vetiver and patchouli. It's clean. It may smell it a little soapy in the opening. It's fresh, it's crowd pleasing, and yet very refined and classy and sophisticated. It's a little spicy, floral, a little green, a little powdery, little earthy, aromatic, woody, and a very creamy fragrance. Um, the ylang ylang and sandalwood are ad adding the creamy element to the blend. It's a fragrance that feels very velvety in texture and is a very pleasant and a very versatile kind of fragrance. I heard somebody saying that it cannot be worn in the hot weather, but it, in my opinion, it can be easily worn and enjoyed in the warm weather. It's a pleasant scent which feels complex and takes you on a journey from the opening to the dry down. Um, it's a beautiful scent, but it was not a love at first wear for me, but it was a love at first wear for me. So it gets better and better throughout the entire wear. Longevity is excellent with a moderate projection. So it's Reflection Man by Amouage. So up next, I have Ambra Calabria by Nishane. This is 
this has been such a surprise um, for me. Um, so different from what I expected before I smelled it. It was on my wish list for quite some time, but I wasn't ready to pull the trigger. Um, I don't always or easily gravitate towards citrusy or fresh fragrances, but ambery vanillic dry downs are my thing. I'm quite easily sold at that. Um, and just recently, one of my lovely subscribers told me that this is much more than a fresh citrus scent and that it ends up settling into settling down into this beautiful ambery vanillic scent. And that was strong enough nudge for me to buy it. And guess what? I've been using it for uh, more than a week now, I think 10 days. Um, and I have to say um, that I quite like it. It opens green. It's citrusy fresh with bergamot. Um, for some reason, this citrusy opening is quite masculine to me. Um, it just smells quite masculine in nature, um, like the kind in men's aftershave. Um, there's jasmine in the heart, adding to this soft floral element here. And this soft creaminess is countering the green a little. And this, this gorgeous coriander seeds adding that muted, warmer, spicier, herbaceous aroma with fresh and woody nuances, creating that spicy and fresh and invigorating and yet quite creamy and smooth concoction. Then there is this sweet amber, vanilla and musk at the base, making it such a beautifully unique scent. It's, it's such a pleasant scent. Um, it's fresh. It's green, it's floral, it's aromatic. It's a little spicy and ambery and vanillic all at the same time. The green notes, the green fresh notes and the deeper amber accord both contrast each other and, and as a result, balance out the whole composition. I'm loving it a lot actually. Uh, it's perfect for the warmer months, um, but I feel it would also be great for the colder months. We'll have to see. I need to play with it a little more. Performance, I feel, could be better. Um, it stays close to the skin and projects softly, so will not fill the room, but you will be able to smell it, um, but a beautiful scent uh, for the weather. With freshness and this powdery, powdery and creamy warmth at the same time, um, the dry down and the whiffs I'm getting of this scent are absolutely to die for. Um, this is Ambra Calabria by Nishane. So up next, I have a very affordable designer. This is um, Explorer by Mont Blanc. Um, this is another one of those super versatile, suitable for all seasons, all weather kind of fragrances, which is perfect for everyday and office wear. Um, it's fresh, it's citrusy, it's woody, and it's aromatic, and a very masculine scent that's very similar to Creed Aventus in scent profile. So if you are a fan of the Aventus DNA, there's a high chance that you will like this. I know people are now sick of Aventus clones, but forget Aventus for a minute and just consider this one on its own uh, merit. There's bergamot, there's pink pepper, this clary sage, vetiver, akikala wood, leather, patchouli. It's a bright, clean, fresh, invigorating, pleasantly aromatic and a woody fragrance. It's well blended for the price, it's affordable and it's... It offers decent performance and longevity. The performance may vary from person to person because I've heard people saying that it doesn't last on them more than two to three hours, uh, but haven't, I haven't had that problem. In my experience, it lasts about six-ish hours with a moderate projection. It's not a beast mode performer like Club de Nui, which is my absolute favorite, um, but if you don't like the Club de Nui for whatever reason, this is a great alternative um, in the similar scent profile region. Crowd pleasing, easy grab, safe blind buy. This is beautiful. This is um, Explorer by Mont Blanc. Also, this is a very good option for if you have teenagers or um, children going to college or university. This is a perfect option because it's so affordable and it gives the, um, the performance and the scent profile that they will like as well. Um, it's awesome. So the last but not the least is um, Giorgio Armani's Aqua di Gio, the performer version. I wanted to include the Perfumo version, which is now sadly discontinued. Um, it was a best-selling men's fragrance, which is now not available to buy in the shops. But I think you can still find it at places like eBay and all. Uh, but the good news is that the brand has released Aqua di Gio Parfum, which if you look at the note structure, essentially both perfumes have almost the same note breakdown, except that there is now clary sage instead of sage, which is a tad bit sweeter than the clary sage. 
which tends to be more towards the earthier side. It's safe to say that it's a kind of rebranding and not necessarily a total reformulation of the original immensely popular fragrance. So this opens with a fresh, crisp green citrus note with bergamot, this aquatic marine salty feel to it, which makes it perfect for warmer months. It's a bit tad bit minty, fresh spicy, it's incense it's woody and aromatic. The Profumo has a very pleasant smoky side to it, but the new Parfum isn't as dark or as smoky, which you, if you think about, uh, makes it a bit more spring summer friendly version of the uh, Profumo. They're both fresh and beautifully masculine scents and are very similar to each other. And since you cannot find the Profumo version anymore, just try the Parfum as it's essentially the same well-loved scent profile. Not the same scent, but similar. But if you've been a diehard fan of Profumo, I know you will have a few things to say. Of course, there are differences, but the new Parfum version does provide a good alternative. It's an intoxicating, sophisticated and timeless and versatile scent profile, suitable for any occasion and any season. Excellent for daytime wear and fantastic for spring summer evenings. The longevity is not exceptional, but is good and it lasts a good seven hours with a moderate projection. I don't have the new Parfum version and I've only tried it in the shop, so I cannot in all honesty say how good the performance on that one is. But looking at the note structure and from my memory of the sampling, um, I would say it's worth checking out if you do like the scent profile that is. So this is Aqua Di Gio um, Profumo. So that's it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.